give a background. We'd like to welcome everyone. We're really excited for this. We know that in a lot of our Zoom talks, Don and I uh, find that a lot of the great feedback we get is when people learn, when they interact, when they connect. And we know that a lot of strategy is something that people really enjoy. So we are having a lot of upcoming events and I'm gonna just switch screens for a second. Um, tonight we have our Maj makeover with Karen, also known as Bubby Fisher. Um, next week, we will have a treat for the eyes. It is virtual vintage, a sneak peek at stunning vintage Mahjong sets of Teresa Benassi, Barney Galasio, Kari Caprinis, Toby Salk, Greg Swain, and Kay Warsiger. Then in November, we will be having another Maj makeover with Bobby Fisher, and that's on November 18th. Our tournament for November is November 19th to the 22nd, and we have both a four round and an eight round. I see a lot of nodding heads because a lot of you that are on here have been part of our tournament. We are having bingo with a Mahjong twist with guest Fern Bernstein in the middle of the games. That's on December 2nd. And then Karen will be back. We are gonna have a Charleston challenge with Bubby Fisher on December 9th. And th that we will actually, instead of real Mahjong, the developer of the American Practice app on the iPhone and Android devices actually um, spoke with Don and I, and he came up with a way that we can deal the same tiles to different players. So that'll be a great way to see how the challenge is. And actually, if you have the app, you could actually look on the side in settings, and if you put in a code, you and whoever else puts that same code in will get the same tiles. So it's just a great way to practice what would you do if this way or that way the tiles come. And then in December, we have another tournament and that we're giving people a little longer time since the holidays. And then we have two guests coming up that we're finalizing and we're already almost into 2021 with our guests. So we are thrilled with all these. If you've missed any of them, um, some of you who are here found us on our YouTube channel. All of these, including this one, we post usually the next day, depending on how the recording goes. Um, usually it will be posted on our YouTube and our Facebook channel tomorrow. Okay, so Michelle asked us to unmute her, which I did, but we just have to, we got Zoom bombed last time, so we're not going to let anybody unmute themselves, so if you have a question, just put it in chat or something like that, because we want to avoid. I see we have a guest from The Simpsons on as well. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't see um, Andrew, his screen, his background, Zoom screen is The Simpsons. Yes. Hi, Andrew. So Very if cute. You want, um, just some Zoom tips. Um, I see a lot of you realize that you don't have to have your screen showing. That's great. Um, if you want to see everybody kind of like the Brady Bunch, there's the different things on the top. You could do um, the full view, gallery view, or you could do speaker view. Uh, Donna records it and she does um, speaker view so we could see closer to what's going on. So did I cover? So Michelle, did you have a question? No, no, I just wanted to be unmute in case I wanted to say something. <laughs> <laughs> so great. That's a great thing. If anybody has anything, um, Don and I are going to keep checking the chat. So Karen really has a whole program scheduled, but if you type, especially in all caps, we'll notice it. And when there's a break in her speech, we can interrupt and give her the question. So without further ado, we would like to introduce Karen Going, searching for Bubby Fisher author and author of, I always get the titles wrong. Karen. Small World and Take Two. And I've already got the title for the third one. I just haven't written it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so sneak peek, an exclusive. So welcome and take it away. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited about this. I had this idea a couple months ago and I went to uh, Dara, and, Dara and Donna and I said, I've got this idea, are you willing? And they're so sweet to let me do this. Um, I think it's gonna be fun. We have two very brave people that volunteered <laughs> and I want everyone to feel like they could be doing this too and open it up for everyone to submit and see if they're willing. Um, sometimes your game just needs a little tweaking. Sometimes it needs a lot of tweaking. Um, what we have today, um, I paired them together, both Jane and Helen. Um, they have a couple of similarities that are interesting. Um, they're both in the Los Angeles area. They have both, each of them has only been playing for about two years. So they're really new players but there's something about them both. They're very driven um, in the things. <laughs> I mean, the fact that after only two years, they were like, we want a makeover. That means that they're passionate enough about the game that they want to get better. 
they have the right attitude as far as I'm concerned. The fact that they're like, we know that there's more that we could be doing. And that's, that's how I was. That's why I wrote Bobby Fisher was because I knew that this was a game I wanted to get better at. And I knew there must be some other people out there. So they're like my target. They get it that, you know, this is such an awesome game. They want to be better at it. Um, so those are some similarities. Oh, there was one other thing that blew me away. I do a little intake form and I asked, I ask all the players when I do the intake, I say, um, do you often throw the winning tile? And they both had such funny answers. Jane, I said, how often do you throw the winning tile? And Jane said, as infrequently as possible. And <laughs> Helen said, I'll throw my hand before I give someone Maj. I'd much <laughs> rather a wall game than throw someone their Maj tile. And I was like, all right, these are coffee girls. You might have heard me talk about coffee versus wine. The wine game is like, oh, you look like you need a flower here. And it's just a social evening and it's fun and everybody's a little drunk and it's fun. But a coffee game, you're there to play and you're intense about it. And I love that both of these ladies are intense about it. And if they want to learn, I'm totally ready to teach them. I think it's great. So they both had that sort of, I want to get better. This is important to me. And I was like, that's why I want to work with you. So I was very excited that they both stepped up. Um, we're going to start with Jane. Oh, I also wanted to say that they both have excellent instincts already and that they both want to be able to eventually, once COVID is over, they want to be able to do tournaments. So there's a lot of similarities between them. And another good similarity is that because they've only been playing for a little while, they don't have the bad habits that some of us have had over the years of using a lot of table rules or, you know, the fact that we forget old hands and new hands. They've only had two cards so far, so they're sort of at an advantage to us. They don't know how many old hands are rolling around in our brains because they've only been playing for two different cards. So anyway, they're sort of like a clean slate, ambitious, great, great students to work with. I'm very happy that they've both stepped up. And uh, as I said, I wanted to start with Jane. So um, Helen, I'm not saying um, go into the soundproof booth or anything, <laughs> but this is just, this is Jane's time. So I wanted to ask Jane a couple of the questions that I asked her in writing. I just wanted to express herself better directly. Um, you said that you did community service, a little bit of teaching, and some, um, but you weren't really a game player, although you enjoy Jeopardy itself. So what was it about Mahjong? What drew you to Mahjong? Actually, a group of women who um, I do Zumba with, some people got injured and they said, well, we still need to get together. And um, there were eight of us, actually 10 of us to start with, and three people already knew how to play. And uh, that's, how it, that's how it started. And we played for about six months, starting last September, a year until COVID. And then somebody forced me to, to use the real Mahjong, kicking and screaming. <laughs> we were so bored. And uh, now we play um, uh, dis social distance digitally outside. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, did you love the game right away? Or were you just like, it's, I'll do it because my friends want to do it? I played it as a little girl. And all I remembered were the, um, uh, the suits. Um, and I just thought, you know, if I end up in assisted living, I want to be ahead of the game. <laughs> well, sounds like you've gone a lot further than that. So that's good. Um, and you said you did Zumba. You're still doing other things online that are helping you get through COVID. You said it's sort of a, it's social, it's emotional. What kind of activities are you doing In that are keeping you? I have two reading groups. I have yoga, treadmill, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to do, since we live in California, it's uh, that we can do socially distant, small, small meetings. Um, and that's it. So I spend a lot of time on my uh, laptop. Also. But, but you are keeping busy, which is part of how to keep your sanity. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, when I do these, in, when I do these um, makeovers, I've been asking people about their style of game. And one of the things that I asked Jane about was um, if there were parts of the card that she preferred and some that she avoided. 
And can you tell everybody what were the ones that you avoid? Surprise, surprise, singles and pairs. Mm -hmm. Because every time I get there, I'm like one short. I think I've won one time. Oh, but you've tried. So, oh, yeah. Some, some of, well, because it's only against um, robots, so. Good. Uh, and then um, I have, I don't, I don't think I have dyslexia, but when there are the three suits, particularly in the three, six, nines and, uh, and the evens, not so much for some reason with the odds, because there seem to be more options. I get like, which ones do I keep? Which ones do I save? Do I go for the safe? Uh, hands and not, you know, take a risk, but the three, six, nine just make, makes me nuts. Huh. It's like a mental block on that. That's interesting. And you said quints, you're sort of iffy on or? Well, the only quints that I, the quint that I've been able to uh, accomplish has been the first quint. Is that the I junk have, one? Yeah. If I have jokers and flowers and, and a pair, I go. Yeah. That's a great hand. I, that's always my favorite go-to. Mm -hmm. I love playing the junkie one. Um, okay, so those are your, that's sort of your weakest part of your game is the fact that you aren't comfortable with the entire card. My goal for you is that there is no part of the card you're not comfortable with. That's the long-term goal for you is for you to say, uh, whatever hand I'm dealt, I'm going to play. I'm not avoiding anything. I'm not forcing my hand to be something I know. I'm going to play what I've dealt and make the best of it. That's the goal here is for you to feel so well versed in any section of the card. So that's what we're going for. Um, so what I wanted to do was we're going to have a split screen for you. You're going to bring up the share screen with real Mahjong. We're going to try first. We're going to, you know, just bring it up and you're going to be playing against bots. So why don't you bring it up? Okay. Okay, you're going to do a new game. Invisible mode? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And you could even switch it to slow mode if you want. Uh, okay. Just for, just for our benefit. Okay. Um, First right. All right. Now, wait a minute. Um, how do I... Turn off I, the volume? No. How do I get rid of the... On the very top, there should be a little line. If you click on that, it'll hide yeah. the video, so you can see the. Okay, whole thing. so I can see. Okay. And and you could and anybody who's watching, you could also click on the top of the pictures of people and move it around if you, if it's blocking your view of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this is like the most <laughs> non three six nine hand I've ever seen. Right. So we can't do anything three six nine with this particular deal. Um, we but got fours. we got fours, which could go, what are you thinking when you see that? Well, I've got the two and the eight and the fours. Right. So I would think maybe, I don't have any flowers, of the, um, of the last uh, even hand. Uh, yeah, right, the two and the many, eight. I have too many fours, though. Um, another thing I was looking at was the second, like, numbers hand, because you've got fours and yeah. one dragon so far. Yes. Yeah. So that's something. So that's um, this it's is kind of funny that you have sevens in each suit. It's not enough yeah. to keep all the sevens, but it's just funny that that showed up in every single suit. But I would, I would, like, keep these. You keep all your evens. Yeah. Um, do not pass all three of the sevens simultaneously. Obviously. That would be a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you're going to pass one of the wins, which of the wins is the smart wind? The smart wind uh, would be the north because those go with evens. I mean, the east, the east they, goes with I'm evens. sorry. The pass the north because the east goes with evens. You are totally spot on. So pick, an, pick the north and then... One of the sevens. And, and the then one? either the, well, yeah, the one. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's see what comes in. Across. Ooh, more oh. evens. Woohoo. Okay. 
See, we don't really know what we're going to get. It just has to sort of come in. Look at all those fours. Holy cow. Okay. So now we've got a little bit of a dilemma. Right. What, what do I do about the, the two and the eight? Oh, I'd still keep them. Yeah. The okay. question is just, I guess I'd pass the, the seven and the nine in the different suits. Do not pass the seven and nine in the same suit. Correct. And then I'm going to pass the east. Yeah. Okay. And let's just see what else comes in. First left. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, this really is hinting to you what to do. Wait, so. Jane, I don't know if you like to do it just so you know what's there, but also those little yeah. arrows right above. Yeah. That'll we'll sort, sort it for you. So it, oh, okay. I mean, not, not, you don't have to. Just give it. <laughs> let me okay, know. so this is where I get screwed. Obviously, I'm going to pass the seven and the nine. And Correct. this is where I have a problem because when, when now there's three different suits. In right. Regions, and this is where I get stumped. Well, there's a couple things. I mean, obviously, if you were, if, if it was prettier down there and everything else was clear, this is the first left and you could stop after the first left. And you can also do a blind pass on a first left. But I don't think you're there yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's worth stealing something for this pass. Definitely pick up the seven and the nine and put them over. But let's look at this. If we're if you're doing that top two, four, six, eight in the um I have no flowers. Cracks. No, you don't have any flowers yet. You see how but it does have a nice start to it. The other thing that it has is the um that hand on the bottom that you were talking about. Correct. The closed one. Again, we need yeah. flowers for that. But I, I would, have I have no two I have well, I had the one two. I have right, right. So now this is where I get screwed. Okay, I'm gonna bring up a whole different hand than you haven't even that you haven't even thought of yet, and it's crazy and it's out there. But I'm just gonna say, when I'm choosing between the eight and the two, why I would pass the eight, even though it's right next to that nine dot, I would pass the eight dot because that second hand in quince. I'm an optimist. Even if I have no jokers, I'm like, I could still make quince. Really? Why not? The only thing that I'm thinking is because you have so many fours. See that second hand in the quince? It's yes. pair, pair in one suit, and then quint in the consecutive numbers. Right. So that's, it's not going to happen. But between the two and the eight, I would pass the eight. You would, that's huh? That's me. That's what I would do. If you want to pass the two, go ahead. But I'm just saying, of all your tiles, those are the two that they're most likely to get rid of. Either right, the two and of or course, the eight. I have no jokers, so there we go. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, let's see what happens. Second left. Huh. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Now. <laughs> see? Wow. So mm. do I have three tiles to pass? You have to. This is second left. You have to be yeah. able to pass three tiles yeah. for second left. It's too late to stop the Charleston now. Right. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I could stop. Oh, yeah, you could stop it. You could stop it. That's, oh, I didn't know how this software works, but you could stop it now. But the question is, then where are you? Why? Right. Where would you be if you stop it now? I would be... if, you mind, if you don't mind if I interrupt, I know she's not a fan of singles and pairs, but since she has, would you even consider looking at the flower 2468 with the dragons? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty. Yeah, if, if I had like, a, if, if I had a one Ooh. Like that Wild rice, wild rice has a good eye. Mm -hmm. Wild rice is saw, yeah, saw something I wasn't even thinking of. Well, the multiplication right. hand, yeah. Yeah, six, six crack times four bam equals two, 24 in the dots. Oh, Very wow. nice oh, wild yeah. rice. <laughs> the only problem is the flowers, but that is a beauty. You've already got three out of your four fours. You've got two out of your th two out of your four sixes. So... Wow, very good spot, Wild Rice. Gold star. <laughs> um, so what am so I getting? I'm getting rid of all these. Not all of them. Okay. I also don't forget this one. Um, oh, the three, four, five. The sixth one down. Two, four, four, six. I know. And the two, four, six. The, there's so many things going on there. This is like I would the definitely get rid of the north. Hand. This is like the perfect hand that I get nuts in. 
That's why it's nice we're playing so slow. Yeah, okay. Oi. Okay, let's pass the north for sure. Um, I don't think we're going to be using the green. I don't either, because I think it's a mistake if you don't have your pairs. Right. Or at least one of each. It's just not coming through. We're not seeing any dragons being passed. Okay. Okay, so we've got that beautiful multiplication. We've also got, I would pass the six bam, because you still have the chance of doing that top two, four, six, eight, because you've got a single and two. I have had the only thing missing, I mean, I need the flowers, but I have no gaps there. Right, so the six bam is the one thing that could go. Let's see what happens. Across. <laughs> well. Oh, another six, oh my God. So all, right, here all, we go. all credit to Wild Rice. This is clearly the hand you are meant to be playing. That's your backup too, but all you can pass for your cross is the seven and the one. If you go that way, I would say pass the seven and the one. Okay. And frankly, pass the eight crack. Wait. You can only, you have to pass three. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What hand am I doing? Now I'm confused. Oh, I was saying that this beautiful multiplication hand, you've got three of your four, so you can call for the fourth four, bam. You've got three of the sixes, so you have to call for one of the six, six, bam, okay. six okay. cracks. Okay. That's, that's the way I would play it. All right. I wouldn't have even thought of that, so I'm passing the eight crack. Yeah, this is a beautiful hand. What about the fact that I have no flowers? You're going to pick them. We're going to live in hope. All right. Here we, we go. We don't win every hand. Last right. Okay, those can go. Right. That's an easy call. Wow, I, I'm still so impressed that she spotted that. I, I've been forgetting about the multiplication hands this year. <laughs> I, I don't need them at all. I Wait, do I need this too? No, you don't. Well, so that was the I backup. Pass, I shouldn't pass an east and a west together, right? Well, but now you're passing a one and it's, it's, it's your call. The winds, if nobody's been like hoarding winds, it doesn't look like. All right, and the one. And let's okay. see what happens. Optional crack. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, optional. Sheila says she'd pass. She'd get rid of that two crack. That's what I thought. You can instead of the north, and then throw. Well, that. here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. If that's your backup hand, although I don't think in this case, I really don't think you need a backup hand no. because your two exposures are not. You've already got the one thing that would have made you dead. Right. Got, and you, you wouldn't pass the dragon and the eight? You think it's too risky? I well, could. In, unless more fours came in. Oh, interesting. Yeah, pass the dragon and the eight. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about more fours coming in, but I, I don't think like numbers is the way you're heading with this. Okay. Let's see what happens. Mm -mm. You get first discard. So sure. I don't remember what went around, but uh, <coughs> now I don't know what to do. The I know we were so focused on all the evens, we weren't even noticing the odds. Uh, I don't know whether there are any fives out. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Five, bam. Now remember what you're waiting for. If it gets thrown, you gotta call it. Eight which, crack. Which four is it that you want? The bam. Three bam. And which six is it that you want? The cracks. Good. So keep your eye out for those. And that leads us to what is Bubby Bubby Fisher always say? Luck. One bam. Luck favors the what is it, the prepared mark? The... Right. So she's already anticipating and thinking about the hand, the card, the tiles she needs to call. <clears throat> See, and I, would one... never, I would never have done this without the uh, flowers. But I have faith that they'll come in. I guess hold on to that two for now. Yeah. You know you don't need the seven. I know, right. Seven crack. Call. Look. Oh well. Sab. We knew there were sevens going around the whole yeah. time, remember? That's how we started with all those sevens. Wow. I would I would I would get rid of this quickly. Absolutely. Good girl. Throw the soaps early. Four bam. Up. Up. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yay. Eight. 
And what are you going to throw? Yeah, you well, can throw one of those. One of these, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, don't you feel in this hand kind of like how she said get rid of the soaps? I mean, I feel like if I know I'm not going to use a two, I get rid of it early on. That's true. Twos are very important this year. They're a very hot tile. Excellent point. That was going around too, but. Of the five dot? I think. See, that's really impressive, Jane, knowing that you've only been oh playing for the year, that you're already so concerned with what was going around. Oh I think that usually doesn't come until someone yeah. has played. Right. West. Joker would be nice. Yeah, of course. A couple <laughs> jokers would oh, be great. That's already, okay, so this is a question. The nine's already out. Uh, should I go with the... Um, should I go with the BAM and get rid of that green BAM already? I see no harm. See what happens. Green. Good job. Good job. North. Two crack. Mm, we know that's safe. This will be the last one of those. Yeah, so why should I throw that now if I know it's safe? Right. Good point. Um, the nine crack could be uh, going with the seven there. crack. It might, but... But maybe they're not ready. Right. Give it a try. Nine crack. Nope. Eight crack. Seven bam. Hmm. Eight dot. Hello. <laughs> I don't need you. Two dot. Yep. North. We haven't seen one flower, have we? Seven bam. Or or a, a, or bam. the J word. Oh gosh. Mm, okay. So I'd want to get this out in case they're playing. Oh no, they wouldn't be playing with the one. But I would get this one out. Yeah, there's already one on the table. So. I mean, I tend to want to get fresh Nine tiles crack. out. Just Green. to see what happens. Well. Five bam. Yeah. No, oh, that one's already out. Yeah. Uh, I could go with any of these, I think. You could also throw your four crack if you wanted. That's been just sitting there collecting oh. space. Four crack. In case somebody wants it, which they don't. Five dot. Oh, there's your five dot again. Go. Oh. Flower. Not yet. There's no south out. There's one get, south out. Oh, I would get it out. South. I don't think people are playing wins. It looks no. pretty slow on wins. Two dot. Sometimes it, it comes up on you, though. Seven dot. Mm hmm So there's no sixes out. I would throw, oh, I don't know. Would you tend to get it out? Or at this point? It, you got, yeah, I would just get, throw it and see what happens. Six bam. I'm very much of a see what happens. <laughs> Three bam. Wow. Joker. West. Eight crack. Mm. No, that's going to go here, maybe. Right. So, so try get it nine. out. Is there any point in holding it now or giving, or wait, maybe I could use it for. No, um, you're not going to use it. No, somebody will put it out and I could pick up a joker. Oh, I see. Um, then throw your other four crack. Four crack. A six crack would be Eight nice. Eight crack. Or maybe not, then people will know what I'm playing. Green. Actually, Green. there's nothing they can do. Green. And they might yeah. think you're playing four, five, six with the five dot. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So, there's I would throw the six dot. Yeah. Six dot. Nine crack. Flower. Mm. The sadness. At least no one called it. Six left. That's true. We Two don't need that. Yep. Three crack. Five crack. Three crack. 
Is this a fresh tile? Yes. Uh, what do you think? Somebody's going to want that, I think. Possibly. But then the question Probably. is, do you wait? No. Yeah. Good. See what happens. Fix crack. Yes. Up. Good. Call it. All. And until you throw that five dot, they don't know that you don't need the five dots. So they might be holding on to theirs. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are not humans. But uh, now I would throw the nine. Sure. See what happens. Nine, ma'am. And say a prayer for a joke. Yes, there's already one out. Okay. Red. Four dot. Mm. <sighs> Sadly. Two. Yeah, throw it. Either of the twos. There, there's a lot of twos on the table already. Mm -hmm. Three bam. Nine dot. Flower. <sighs> the third one. Wow. I think are the ones out. The one bam's out. Yes, one. I've seen some. Yeah. Or There's the two five, on the table already. Five dot. I would hold on to that five dot to keep them on their toes. If I was playing humans, I would definitely keep them, keep the five Excel. dot in mind. Flower. <laughs> I need four jokers. One dot. <laughs> it could happen. There's uh, already eight, two eight dots out. You're out. Eight yeah. dot. Five bam. West. Five crack. Nope. Now I could let it go. Absolutely. Five crack. <clears throat> Three dot. One crack. Four dot. Where the heck are the jokers? <laughs> Another eight, eight dot. The last one of those. Eight bam. They may be in the oh. wall. Oh. Mm. Uh -huh. Interesting. Interesting. She either wants the six dot or the nine. Yes. Ah. ah, finally a joker. Okay. All right. So the two, the two is crack is safe. The two crack. Two crack. So. North. Maybe I'll get a flower. Or an eight bam. bam. See if you get an eight bam, you can trade it. Whoop, good. Uh -huh. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna go like this. <laughs> ching ching. <laughs> okay, so get rid of that three dot. Yeah, three those dot. Are out. We still don't know what you need. Seven dot. Nine crack. Are those that's all safe. out? Yeah, those... that's safe. Uh, then nobody's playing wins. East. Joker. Ooh, we're getting to the very end. Well, I, I have one more. South. I have two more, right? Yes. Okay, is this four safe? Yes. Four crack. Joker. I know my joker, right? One dot. Joker. <laughs> oh, oh, so close. I better throw the Joker. Really? Absolutely. Because a wall game is better than. Okay, so we can close that now. Close the share screen. Okay. Okay, so wait, they were doing. Oh, it doesn't matter what they were doing. Flowers are hard to come by when you have zero, but it was an interesting exercise in going out of your comfort zone. You yeah, but it takes me back to. I'm not doing that hand again unless I have one flower. <laughs> you didn't know you were going to pick three jokers like that. Things can just fall in your lap. Even if you start out with yeah. something, you can still, like I said, I'll play quince even though I have no jokers because they often just come to you. There are eight okay. flowers, there are eight jokers. They could just come to you. Okay. And frankly, that hand with the four flowers is easier than making a pair of flowers. You never would have made a pair of flowers. Right. And so, I never would have made the top hand with the um with the craft four six eight yeah well it 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 was an interesting exercise i'm still very impressed with the 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 rice person who figured out to do the multiplication that was awesome um your defense was very good 
it was very good that you were very careful okay. about what had already been thrown. Um, what I would suggest so that you're more comfortable going forward is, do you have a set at home, like a real set? You mm -hmm. bought yourself a set of tiles? Okay, physically make hands like on a rack in front of you so you can see them. Because yeah. sometimes what it looks like on the card doesn't really register with your brain. You need to physically see it. So like if you see a 369 laid out in front of you, it might make more sense to you than it does sitting there on the card. The other thing is don't get caught up in the numbers so much as the pattern of, of these hands. Like the top 369 hand is just like the third consecutive run hand. Right. It's three of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind, four of a kind. Yeah. And instead of it being consecutive numbers, it's three, six, six, none. So just get more acclimated to the style of those hands. Um, I like that you play bots, that you're not afraid to do that. It's certainly the least painful way to do it. You're not wasting anybody's time. It's just for you. If you put in a couple times a week, a half an hour with the bots, playing hands that are out of your comfort zone, I think you're going to find that you'll get more comfortable with them. Okay. So that's what I recommend. Mm -hmm. um, but your instincts are really good. You've got good defense skills. You've got good passing skills. Um, you know, you know when to call for things. I think you're well on your way to becoming a very good player. It's just the one thing that I think is your single thing you got to get past is the hands that are too far for you right now. You've got to get no hand is off limits. You have to get to the point where you realize no hand is off limits. So that's okay. my goal I'll, for you. I'll repeat that mantra to myself. And I want to see in a couple months you coming back and saying, oh my gosh, it's, I'm, I'm able to do more. So that's what I want. That's the goal here. Okay, thank so, you. No problem. Now, Helen, <laughs> Helen, unmute, please. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Let's see. Um, I think I think Donna stepped away for a second, so let me tell her. Okay. That. No, I'm here. I asked Helen to unmute. Oh, there, good. Thank you. Okay. Now, Helen, I, I just have I just have to say one thing. Wild Rice is my friend Ronnie. She um, so she's on here, so I just want to say, she did great. well done. Yeah, she did great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, she gets the gold star. I was very impressed. Yes, I'm good at her. I, I her. I told her it was the luck of her new jokers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy, though, those three jokers at the end. Um, okay, now, Helen is the den mother. She may have, might have never been a Cub Scout mom, but she has those, that skill set. It's pretty clear to me. Um, I want for everybody to understand just how quickly Helen has taken over this game. So tell everybody that you, you went to some house party fundraiser and what yeah. happened? So in 2017, my, my son's school hosted, the parents host parties as fundraisers. So I went to a Mahjong party, super fun. Maybe played one other time. And then two years later, 2019, February, I played. And I'm like, I'm not going to learn Mahjong playing once a week. So I recruited well, no, four friends. Year, you said. I mean, once yeah, yeah once, a one, yeah, once a year. I'm not going to learn Mahjong playing once a year. <laughs> so I recruited four friends. One of them is here, Janet Thomas. Wave, Janet. <laughs> um, she was one of our teachers and um, three other players. So four teachers who were regular players. And I just asked friends. So 16, we had four tables. Wow. And we just started at Ronnie's house. We're at Ron I think Ronnie's camera's off, but Ronnie hosted it. Um, and we started once a month. I started a group. And I like now have 150 people on my list, but it's insane. The, yeah. But the <laughs> most, like people just, I have, I probably have, um, I've taught, I have helped a lot of people play just because I've introduced, like I, I, people would say, I want to play. I want to play. So when we would get together, we'd have three tape, three groups. We have beginners and Janet always taught and we have social games and we have tournament style games that played for money. So that's your wine and your coffee. Yeah. So we evolved kind of because we what happened once was that we had I mixed like kind of a social and tournament style together and it was a mistake. So next the next month yes. I realized I had to dip move them based Absolutely. on ability. Yeah. Well, and I'm hoping that maybe someday Jane will be part of yours since she's somewhat of a neighbor. 
I love that. Well, Ronnie lives in Encino and she hosts most of them. So, and Jane's in That's Sherman right Oaks. That's right next to Sherman Oaks, right. Yeah. So There's great. Ronnie. Do you see her? There's Ronnie. Yes. Wild race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, she, hosts, she hosts most of our gatherings. And we have like 12 tables now. That's like that's, that's and, phenomenal. So I was saying that um, you've got these impressive organizational skills. You get stuff done. That's why I'm calling you a den mother is because those are the ladies that get it done. I was very impressed with that. Um, and you said you like puzzles, but you don't like games so much. So what was it that drew you to Mahjong? When you, you said you liked it when you saw it once and then two years later, you liked it again. But what is, what is it well, that attracted you? I, I, I think it, I considered it my empty nest project. I have one child, he's a sophomore in college. So when he went off to college, I'm like, you know what, I'll take up a hobby, like in Mahjong seemed like a fun one. I thought that I love the artistry of the tiles. I love the kind of the fact that you get a new card every year, the, um, that the flexibility of like what you have to do, all the different hands on the card. I just thought it seemed to fit a lot of different boxes for me. Well, the fact that you like puzzles, I think that probably spoke to you. Actually, I've like never to. done puzzles except pre-COVID. March was my first time I've ever done a puzzle. Oh, I started out with the jigsaw? Yeah, jigsaw puzzle. puzzle. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, I can't do crosswords. No way. <laughs> okay. Oh, I thought you meant like Sudoku or something. Oh, no. Okay. But, you, but you're obviously, this is, this has touched a nerve with you that this is a game that, that clearly you've flown with it. I love the fact that there's 150 people in your group. Um, I also want to give a shout out to your mentor, Laura Slovin. Yes, obviously my mom's mentor. <laughs> yes. So if she's here tonight, if she's not here tonight, she's not here. But she's anyway. the one who she she organized the group. But Janet Thomas, who's here, she is one of my teachers too, and she always teaches at our group. She sacrifices playing her game so she can teach every month. So I Very want to thank nice. her. Very nice. It's important because every every one of us was a beginner at one point. And so it's very thoughtful of her. And any of you that, again, feel like you could use a little bit of pointers here and there. Hello, Maureen, sneaking in there. I see you. Um, we could all use a little bit of help. So it's wonderful when somebody can step outside and be that helper. And then maybe another week, hopefully she gets the chance to play. Um, one thing I liked, and I think that's why, because you've been playing a little more, um, you said you're you play whatever you're given. You're not afraid of any one section on the cards. So that's where I want to see Jane in about two or three months. So I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I thought it was great that you stepped forward to ask for the makeover, but the irony was that I'm not sure that what I'm going to be telling you is a short-term makeover thing. I don't think that I can get your online game to be that much better. What I want with you, because you were saying you want to do tournaments when all this COVID, not you know, nonsense is I've over. I've played a few, I have played a few tournaments. On COVID, on online though? No, I played both. I played in-person tournaments and I played online. Okay, I, what I, you tell me how, what was your experience with those? Well, the first time I played a tournament, I wanted to throw a tournament, which is kind of crazy. So mm -hmm. I started our group in April. I wanted to throw a tournament. So I'm like, I have to go to a tournament. So I only played Mahjong for three months and I went to a tournament in July. And I was so scared. I just played consecutive run. I was just like, oh my yeah. God, this, it was yeah. so fast. All I did oh, was like, eh, eh. oh honey, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, and then I threw a tournament for our group. Great. Um, with, for, with 12 tables and it was super fun. And then I played a few other tournaments. So I was playing tournaments in LA. Um, like, yeah, so I have, I have played a few tournaments. Okay, because what I was going to be giving you were pointers because that's, you said that was your long-term goal was continuing to do tournaments once life gets back to normal. I'm, I'm totally open. I mean, I'm a new player. You know, I've, I've been playing since April 2019. Wow. But so. you obviously, you've taken to it. Um, the things I was going to say, and this is true for all of us, that's the point. Just because I'm giving her the makeover doesn't mean you can't learn a lot from this too. All of you we've all gotten used to the way that it's so nice. You just click that button and it resets up your tiles. So pretty and so easy. So um, we've kind of gotten lulled into a complacency of, oh, it'll just set up our tiles for us. When we go well, back, wait, what, Helen? No, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, when we go back to playing in person, 
we're going to have to start setting up our own tiles and we're going to have to make sure we don't fall into the bad habits. Um, uh, Tom Sloper talks about this as an important strategy thing. A lot of people have, have brought it up that it's a real flaw in your game, in your in-person game. If you set up your tiles very predictably, for instance, if you separate your sections, like you say, oh, here are my, all my cracks and here are all my bams, and you have like space between your tiles, or if you have almost all your tiles set and you're just waiting for the, the second of a pair and you have one little tile hanging out by itself on your rack, bad. All of that is bad defense for yourself. You should keep all your tiles together. And in fact, sometimes for bluffing purposes, you might want to take a rack, you know, pick a tile, you have no use for it, but put it on your rack anyway, put it in the middle of your rack, sort of pull around a little bit. These are things <laughs> you can do to throw off other players so that you are not an easy mark for them. I'm trying to teach you some sneaky strategies so that nobody can exactly figure out what you're doing. Yeah, Karen, on, that point, oh, on that point, when you give tiles to someone, Somebody once asked, is it cheating to look to see if they put it in their rack? It's not cheating. It's, it's part of a skill. It, it, it's yeah, part of I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like sit there and stare at them. You like, you can look out of the corner of your eye. <laughs> but yeah, you could sort of see. And the fact is, everybody should make it so that they can't be read that easily. Right. You should take those tiles, put them in your rack, switch them around a little bit so they don't know that you ended up passing them right away again. They, they don't need to know that. But Even that's, that's part of the deception that you need to do as a good tournament player so that nobody can read you too easily. If you pick up a joker, try and keep a poker face. Don't be like, ah, I can <laughs> um, If you pick up a flower, don't automatically put it at the end of the rack where you always keep your flowers. Um, I tell a story about this one woman. Oh, she was so obnoxious. Um, she was, I, I met her when I was doing a speaking thing and she insisted I had to play with her and she started complaining that this one woman she knows is so easy to read. She's like, she always plays the same hand and she always sets up her tiles the same. So I said, okay, I'm gonna set up my tiles crazy. So like there was no rhyme or reason to them. I put an eight bam next to a six crack next to a three dot, yet no logic to it whatsoever. Just because I didn't want her saying, oh, it's so easy to figure out what you're playing. And that's true in general. You don't wanna make it too easy for people to know what you're doing. Um, on the other hand, don't confuse yourself. Um, don't do that perpendicular thing. I don't know how many of you were taught that, oh, if you need a tile, put it perpendicular to mark it off. Try not to make yourself so easy to read, especially in tournament play. So that was basically my only tip for you was something that has nothing to do with the online game. Because online, they set it up nice and pretty for us. Nobody can see your facial expression. Well, I guess some of us play with Zoom simultaneous. Like some of you, none of you play while I, you're- we, we use house party, but- Right, um, so your friends, you're talking to your yeah. friends, but, but it's, Karen, still, it's a whole different level when you're playing in person. Have you ever played on Mahjong time? No. Okay. Is it harder? So, I mean, I think it's, I like it the best. I play on Mahjong time. And I, and because you can get belts, you know, there's levels of reaching. We're in a guild. We have, our guild is called Six Bam Birds, and there's six of us. And you, when you play every week, you accrue points, and um, so that's fun because that's because we have our group together. But um, there's a game helper on um, Mahjong Time, and that's a total crutch for me. On the side, oh, you mean of the, it, it recommends what you should be playing. No, on the side, it tells you what tiles. It says like, oh, there's two East out. There's like, it tells you what's uh, available and what's not. And I totally use that all the time. Yeah, and it's bad, such a bad, bad, bad. I know, bad, bad. I know, I know. So I, no, I mean, when you're saying that to me, I'm like, okay. <clears throat> it's true. I think it's going to, on the one hand, this has been a wonderful tool for us. We've all learned the cards better by playing online. It's kept us sane. We all agree that that's really important but it's been a crutch in a lot of other ways. Like I said, we don't spend a lot of time dealing. We don't spend a lot of time um, setting up our tiles. It does it for us. So we're gonna have to relearn some skills once we, please God, go back to COVID. <laughs> I mean, go back to playing in live when COVID's okay. over. Then we will have to relearn some of our skills, but by all means, keep playing until then online. So you keep up your 
understanding of the card and figuring out what hands to play. It's just the, the other skills that are related to playing the game that we're going to have to relearn or reacquire or remaster, basically. So that and we can be the best. We can. That game helper is not on when, when there's tournaments or marathons. That game helper is not on. That's good. <laughs> is that your preferred version for tournaments, or you say people can play whatever version if they like oh, real mahjong? They can do. People could play on any, but to level the playing field, since like mahjong time will call you dead or allow somebody to call dead. Real mahjong, it's a different. So you don't go by the scoring on the game. You go by the scoring on the card. And there's a bonus for if you go jokerless, and there's penalty if you throw to two or more exposures. So we make it just as if you're in an in-person tournament, not an online tournament. Excellent. Excellent. And actually, Helen won one of ours. Hey. <laughs> Good for you. Um, got so lucky. It was bananas. But anyhow. Well, when we go back to playing live, some of you play for money, some of you don't. I mean, there's all sorts of things that are going to come up that'll be different. but for now, if you have found that there's some part of your game that you wish you could get a little more help on, like I said, with Helen, I didn't see anything that was online that needed help. I thought it was more the finessing and the, and the sneaky and the, and the defense and all of that. And with Jane, I thought that her issue was more, how do I get familiar with the whole card so that I can play any hand I want? Um, if you have an issue, please email me or email Modern Mahjong and say, I would like the makeover. I want to get some help in getting over my little hump. Um, we're doing this again next month, November 18th. And tell your friends, you know, this is a, a free quick Mahjong lesson. Jane has a comment. Yeah, let me. Um, so wait, wait, you got to unmute. Let me unmute her. Okay. Um, there she okay. is. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm going to plug your book uh, because I read it, I devoured it, and now I want, I'm reading part two. Um, and I, I first I got it online in Kindle, but when you have a reference book and you have to refer back, it's much better. I have little stickers. doesn't matter which, which uh, year I'm playing, but it's really, really helpful. So there Thank you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the plug. Um, that's what I'm here for in the blog too. The blog is totally free. Anybody that ever wants to just look at an article now and then I have all sorts of silly stuff and serious stuff and strategy stuff. So we, we put your blog and your email address in the chat as people are talking here. So awesome. Awesome. So I hope somebody will step forward for the November 18th. We'll be putting something together and, um, any other questions Did anybody else, I didn't get to see the comments cause I was busy. People, people like your coffee and wine, and I love what, Janelle, <laughs> what she said, because I ask people, you know, to chime in if they appreciate that distinction. Janelle said she always starts at coffee, unless she had a bad day, but then she moves to wine if she wins a couple to celebrate. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. And I think, honestly, the later it goes, sometimes when you've been losing all day, you get to the point where you're like, oh, whatever, I'll try something crazy. And sometimes if you've been winning all day, you're like, oh, whatever, I'll try something crazy. So either way, I think time is a huge factor in starting to play a little loopier. But yeah, I, and we all have our wine days anyway. Even if we're coffee players, sometimes you just need a wine day. But I think that's so much better than saying, is it a friendly game? Because then friendly kind of implies that other people who follow rules aren't friendly. Yeah. And implies that you're loose on the rules and you're not, so I, I like yeah. that distinction. Thank you for pointing out that distinction. <laughs> That's not law background. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to give a shout out to my friend Maureen, who's an, also a, a lawyer. They yep. always say that teachers are the most common Mahjong players, but I'm meeting a lot of lawyers that like Mahjong too. Who yeah. wants to say hi to Helen? Oh, Teddy. That's my dog. Uh, yeah, my dog's barking too. Um, and my husband just got home. So unless anybody has an urgent question thank now, you, I'm going to get off. Thank but you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Jane and Helen, thank you so much for thank volunteering. You were very brave. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks, girls. I'll see you. It was brilliant. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Karen. Bye. Take thank care, you. everybody. Bye. Bye. Nice seeing you. Bye. Bye, Sheila. Bye. Thanks, all. <laughs> Everyone can say bye now. <laughs>
Yes, we'll see. I'm Lauren Bobstein. See you soon. See you on the tournament. Francis. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be there. <laughs> Good luck, Sheila. <laughs> Oh, I'm told. I every time you tell me that, I said that's the kiss of death. Oh, no. <laughs> I have been doing so bad in the tournaments, but if I when I'm playing, I think I said, why can't I have these hands when I'm playing tournaments? They go to another country. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it is. It's a game. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for a great evening. Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed. Thank it. you. Can't wait for my goodies. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Have a good evening, everybody. See you.